60s, Mr. Uh, uh, Jones, Elijah Muhammad said, America would suffer from unusual rain, unusual snow, earthquakes, unusual. Then the forces of nature, hail, sleet, snow, cold, fire. Now look at America. You just came from Texas. Something horrible happened there just a few days ago. But you can't say, well, who did that? Well, you can call it El Nino, El Nino, my foot. That is God's judgment coming on America as it was written. Now, God has said, you have to reap now what you've sown. You've destroyed cities and towns in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, things that you didn't want. America destroyed them. Now look at your cities. They're underwater. Your farmland being destroyed. Fire burning the lands of California and the West. Tornadoes, hurricanes. And, and it's just the beginning. beginning. This is just the beginning. And that is what I wanted to say about whoever will be our president. If you're not dealing with that which has incurred the wrath of God, then you can't make America great again. And you can't bring America back from the abyss that she's falling into. Within the next few years, the dollar that we kill each other for will be devalued into nothing. What will people use when the dollar is gone? What will happen to the world? A war is coming, and that war will clean the slate, and whatever is left will find a way to become one with each other. We have no other alternative than either to live together in peace. So God is going to set up a government. This one is not it. Well, obviously, I came here with the intention of doing an open, real interview, and you were on the same page, uh, but it's gone even better than I thought. And obviously, I'm going to put this interview out pretty much in its entirety with a lot of clips that uh, basically augment what we've discussed here today. And I know full well the media will take it out of context and say that Alex Jones endorses everything that Minister Louis Farrakhan has to say. You know, even if it was 30, 40 years ago, we all grow. But that doesn't matter because this interview is to get people of all spectrums thinking outside the box and getting over the new tyranny that is political correctness to not talk to each other, to be all upset and scared, and to watch what we say uh, so that they can restrict all free speech. And I don't think anybody can disagree with the fact that this has been a very, very important interview. And that unfortunately, so many of the warnings that you have raised in the past are unfolding. Uh, and I do hope that, uh, that my group, InfoWars, can talk with your organization and group and hopefully share information, because that's what it's all about. I mean, you look at Russia right now. For five years, this has never happened even during the Cold War, when the Soviet Union was truly evil. They will not communicate with the Russians at any level. They just won't talk to them. And they send their envoys here, and they just won't meet with them. Uh, that was only going on during you know, World War II with the Nazis. It, it's really unprecedented that a state of war already basically exists with Russia. And you can say what you want about Russia. I'm not lionizing Russia, but we're so corrupt that you can actually say that, that Russia is good now, to many respects, promoting family, promoting organic food, not pushing vaccines. You turn on Russian TV, it's, you know, U.S. vaccines found with cancer viruses, uh, fluoride, brain damages. I mean, the Russians have already gone to the bottom of this social engineering. New York City, the private Federal Reserve, is on record financing the Bolsheviks, sending the 100,000-man army over there. Uh, the truth is that whole Soviet evil we fought was a creation 
of the wicked system that couldn't get it all done here right away, so went and overthrew the czars who were under feudalism and took over that weak host and just installed pure evil and then used that evil to take our freedoms over here in the name of responding to it. Uh, and it, it's, 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 I don't want to see that here. I know that just incredible, you can see it, but I can feel it, just great evil is coming, great judgment. And uh, folks better get themselves right right now with God and, 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 and get past all the petty fighting, all the petty mindlessness, myself included, because we all get angry, we all, you know, who are real, shoot from the hip. But uh, it's been a very, very uh, informative uh, interview, and I appreciate you giving me more than three hours of your time total when we first got here, Mr. Farrakhan. No, sir, thank, uh, thank you. Right you. And I, I must say sure. that ISIS is the bastard child of America's errant foreign policy, and none of the globalist ideas will take root, and I guarantee when this is put before the world to judge us as they will, we will find that there are more people who will agree and want to come out from behind the madness to try to make a better contribution to make a better world. We see that happening. So many people in Hollywood are saying, I don't want to be liberal. I don't want to be conservative. I want to be free. Minister Farrakhan, you speak about ISIS uh, in some of your speeches uh, being the bastard child of America. And who, who can doubt it is? But it's beyond that. Uh, the fighters themselves are misguided, obviously. But when you look at who funds it, who protects it, who runs it, it's the neocons inside the White House. And, and look, I know Obama is just a pitch man, a CEO, as you say. But at the same time, I didn't support him or McCain because I was just hoping that Obama would come in and actually bring reconciliation, how naive I was. Clearly, the systems used him to create racial division, all these problems. Look at what they did to Gaddafi. A Republican couldn't have gotten away with that. Imagine if Bush would have been doing that, what you would have had to say about him. I know you had strong words for Obama, but now Obama, Hillary, the neocons behind him turning loose a multi-hundred-thousand-man army to run around murdering all these innocent people, killing Muslims, killing Christians, and then our media sits there and tries to spin it when Anderson Cooper is endorsing the rebels in Libya, in Egypt, uh, in places uh, uh, like we see in Syria, and then even our arch allies, the Egyptians, go and join the Russians now, and it's on national TV there and in their print that our government runs ISIS and Al-Qaeda. A, do you agree with that? And then B, what do you think this signifies that they would be so bold as to run this radical proxy army against the world with a hope of having a clash of civilizations and then blaming it on Islam and the Muslim world in general? I mean, cannot the Muslim world see it's a major setup, a part two of 9-11? There is a power In, in one that is called Mahdi, M-A-H-D-I, that's the guide that the Islamic world has been expecting. And Masi, or Messiah, which the Christian and Jewish world have been expecting. And this Mahdi, when he comes, his number one aim is to set justice in the earth and remove every tyrant and set up a government of peace. That's his aim. That's the aim of the Messiah, the Christ. Now what we are looking at, these are, these are not spooks and spirits that come out of space. These are human beings anointed with power and wisdom to do exactly what they purpose to do. That's why I know the globalists will never win. It appears that they're winning, but their plot is turning in against them. Here's how I would see it. In Islam, 
the religion needs to be reformed. In fact, all religion has failed to produce the human being that God wants out of us. If we are made in the image and the likeness of God, we are created by God to reflect him perfectly. That is not in religion today. So Islam now has tyrants ruling. Saudi Mecca is uh, my holy city. I love Mecca. I love Arabia, but who is backing Arabia in killing the Houthis in Yemen, using American firepower, planes and tanks and guns? Okay, now there's internal strife. They killed a, an imam, a Shiite imam. Now they've broken relations. This thing is, is leading to great war now. And America, they, ISIS says, come on over. And America says, we got to put boots on the ground. No, you put boots under the ground if you're foolish enough to jump into that fray. That is made now because the number one tyrant is not Russia. The number one tyrant is right here. So everything is moving to bring this house down. And what's happening is it's coming down from within like ancient Rome and Babylon. But war will bring it to an end. So I would hope, as I leave this wonderful dialogue with you, sir, that those who want to be president, if you can't see how to turn the wrath of God away from America, because I want you to pay close attention to the weather, you're going to see rain like you've never seen it. Snow like you've never seen it. God is going to turn the very things that you need to survive and make it your enemy. Right now in Texas, thousands of head of cattle were destroyed in this last thing. Milk gone. Famine is coming to us who have eaten well. But God is going to humble America and the so-called globalists. I laugh at you because you have laid the trap, but your foot is in your own trap. The whole world will go free, free of all tyrants. And I am with God to set down every tyrant on this earth. The people must be free to grow, to develop, to be cultivated that the glory of God may be seen in the human being that he created. I dare you, but I know you. <laughs> I dare you, but I think if you can see in what we're saying your own salvation, you have to break from those who control you and stop lying and start telling the truth to the American people and to the world. And if you don't, your power as media is gradually being destroyed. You tried when you put... Mr. Trump on television every minute of every day, questioning, hoping he would say something that would blow him out of the water. And every day he got stronger and stronger. That shows that your media is not working. So why not work it for good? 
So my host, uh, my brother has asked me, uh, he said, uh, warn them. 